Hey guys, welcome to Collider Movie Talk, movie talk for movie fans. I'm your host, Ashley Mova, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news from the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Leading off the show today is John Campia. Well, greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome to the Best Damn Movie Related Show on the planet Earth, coming to you from right here at the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California. We're a few minutes delayed today if you're watching us live, because we're all trying to figure out what happened to Jeremy Johns' career on Perfect Strangers. <laughs> also, here is John Schnepp. I don't know if you could read that fast enough. That that you were like, I said it a lot. It was, it was so fast. I was like, amazed at the uh, the speed. <laughs> also, I'm here's slow Mark today. Ellis. I have never wanted to be a named Larry more or be been Jeremy's cousin more than right now. <laughs> oh, so here's Jeremy John. Uh, you guys want to have your minds blown? Google image Balky Perfect Strangers. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey guys, as happens sometimes, a couple of pieces of news drop after we already get all of our sidebars and images together. A couple things happen. Number one, new image for John Wick 2 has just dropped. Now, if you guys have been watching our show for the last couple of weeks. We're super excited. This image, and of course, what is a John Wick image without a dog? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. I see this picture, I get excited. I want to see it with another dog. Is this the dog? I didn't look up frame shots from the original John Wick, but if you remember at the end of John Wick 1, Wick walks away from that pound after patching himself up, and he takes a dog with him. I think this is the dog from, from the first movie. Schnepp, you had a chance to see the picture. Is this the same dog? I have absolutely no idea. That movie, though, is so amazing. I'm going to watch it again just to answer that, unless you get it right now, like tweet it out, like let I'm us know. I'm sure they're get firing into the question oh, yeah. from that dog? I, I'm glad that he's got a dog. I'm glad it's a pit bull. I want him to mess some stuff up. I can't wait to see that dog tear somebody open. Jeremy, is this the same dog? I darn well hope it's the same dog, because if it's not the same dog, that means he got a dog, lost that dog, and there was an entire John Wick movie we never even saw. <laughs> so I'm going to say, yeah. What about you, Ellis? It's got to be the dog, John. It's got to be the dog. When I first saw this image, I was like, oh, it's a cute puppy. Then my next thought was, oh, don't kill that puppy. Do not <laughs> kill another dog. We don't need another dog killed. He just needs a companion. And pit bulls, while they can can be very violent. They're just nice animals that want love and adoration. If you give them that, they're going to give it back to you. They're misunderstood, a lot like Mr. John Wick. I mm. thought you were talking about yourself there for a I second. I also am. You give me love and adoration, I will lick your face. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Cousin Larry. He's, he's tried to do that a few times. All right, the other thing that has dropped is a brand new trailer for the upcoming uh, the Harry Potter Part 8, uh, which are Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Brand new trailer drop for this just came out. Look, I'm not a, a Potterite. I'm not a hardcore Harry Potter fan. I've enjoyed the movies, I like them. I go to Harry Potter land over here at Universal. I enjoy it a lot. But the, the last couple of trailers for this movie have really done it, and this trailer might be the best one they have done yet. Colin Farrell, I almost said Colin Firth. <laughs> That's a totally different movie. Colin Farrell looks awesome in this movie. I love the way he's carrying himself. Uh, the, the, the visual effects look wonderful. It feels like they've struck that balance that would be so hard to strike in that it feels like it's totally own movie, but it very much feels like a Harry Potter movie mm. all at the same time. I was really impressed by it. I liked it a lot. Ellis, you had a chance to see it. What did you think? If this trailer was a human, John, I would have licked its face as well because <laughs> it's very good one. Jerry and I actually did the review for a Collider video. We did a reaction and review, and it was fun watching it with somebody who's a huge Harry Potter mm. fan because I appreciate Harry Potter. I really like the movies. Didn't read any of the books. I'm excited to go back into the universe, and that's what I like from this trailer is that I got the vibe that I was back in this world where these things can happen. The big thing in this trailer is how much magic spills over into our world that we're going to be aware of. So there's a lot of muggles that are knowing a lot about wizardry here. How are they going to sort all that out? I want to find out. Schnapp, what do you think of the trailer? I loved it. I mean, to be honest, this is the most exciting of the you know Fantastic Beasts trailer for me. This one made me want to see the movie immediately. I yeah. love I love the shots of all of them, kind of almost in like a like a 1940s detective squad, but with instead of guns, they had, <laughs> they had the you know it was like wands. monsters, but yeah. yeah. they, 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 they had this kind of vibe to it. Where I was like, damn, this is so badass. It's completely made me forget about Harry Potter, yet we're still in that world. Like Voldemort and all those people, are they gone? This is brand new stuff. So it's exciting for me to see all this new kind of stuff in the Potter world. Jeremy. Yeah, it does kind of look like the Untouchables with wands for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, there's, uh, there's something, to, for those of you who are not uh, Potterites at the table, it's okay. Nobody's perfect. But as someone who really <laughs> is, uh, I'm looking forward to this one. And one thing that I noticed is that, I mean, there's a lot of magic in the muggle world. And we talked about this a little bit in the reaction where it's like, I feel like the rules that we see 
in Harry Potter that are so stringent, like you can't have magic in the real world, muggles cannot see it, might be because of the events of this, because there's a lot of magic yeah. over a lot of eyes of mm. human beings who should not be seeing magic. So I'm thinking that the laws that we know in Harry Potter might come from the events of this. We happen to have a couple other big Harry Potter fans, uh, probably bigger than anybody at this table, at uh -huh. that table, Ashley and Wendy. <laughs> hey. Ashley, I feel like let's... I should have worn my Ravenclaw uh, attire today. Then, Wendy, let's start with you. You had a chance. I mean, you're the one who introduced me to Potterland over there at Universal. Mm -hmm. What did you think about this new trailer? Are you looking forward I to this movie? I introduced you to Butterbeer, too. You're welcome. I <laughs> love this trailer. This looked like it's going to be an, a an epic battle with guns and with wands. And also, I don't know if you guys caught this, but they said Grindelwald's attacks in Europe. And if you guys don't know, he is one of the darkest wizards next to Voldemort. So I think this is going to hopefully lead into these the epic battle between him and and Dumbledore since this mm -hmm. is preset in like the 40s. Is this how nerdy I sound when I talk about Star Wars? <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. so that, that was, was not nerdy. That was okay. not was nerdy. I don't know what she said. I am going to be cool. honest. I'm really impressed right now. You should I be. love you to you Ashley, be. what do you think Ray about um, that? First of all, Hufflepuff. Um, yes. <laughs> the music was what really like captured me right away. It takes you back into that Harry Potter feel. And I think that what works so well with Harry Potter is that not only did it appear to the, appeal to the younger audiences, but also the older ones too. And I think that this is going to do that even more or so and Eddie Redmayne always great with his character work and again we can see he's doing it again I'm just I know that there's a sequel right around the corner for this like, and can I I'm just so say excited. I totally forgot that Ezra Miller was in this until mm -hmm. I saw him mm -hmm. yeah, yeah right like I saw him in this show I'm like wait I, that caught me off guard untouchables with wands I love that <laughs> yeah. a, that's a new subtitle <laughs> it should be called that all right guys it's time for us to move on to our first official story of the day which is something that we've kind of been speculating about so Ashley what do we got Disney has officially announced that director John John Favreau and the studio are putting together a new reimagining of The Lion King and are fast tracking it to production. The project follows the groundbreaking smash hit The Jungle Book, directed by Favreau, which debuted in April and has earned 965.8 million worldwide. Like its upcoming Beauty and the Beast live action reimagining, The Lion King will include songs from the animated film. No release date has been set. John, what do you think about a live action Lion King movie with John Favreau directing? You know, we've been talking about the possibility of a, a quote unquote live action Lion uh, a Lion King, Lion's Gate, Lion's King, uh, <laughs> Lion King movie for a while. And I've always said, I just don't know that you can do it. I just don't know that you can do it, blah, blah, blah. Then we see The Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. And we go, throw all that out the window. You, you yeah. can do it. And then I remember a lot of people speculating, hey, well, Leo, John Favreau just did Lion King. He, he could do Lion King because he just did Jungle Book. And that just made too much sense. Mm -hmm. So you don't think it's going to happen <laughs> because it just makes too much sense. Now here's a look. This is Fabulous. This is absolutely fabulous. Nothing is guaranteed. Maybe they do it and it's terrible, but this is, after seeing Jungle Book, this is something worth taking a shot at, right? Now, I hesitate, though, to call this a live action mm -hmm. because remember, in the Jungle Book, nothing you saw was real except for Mowgli. Mowgli was the only real thing in that movie. Everything else, the trees, the leaves, the water, everything was digital. So I don't know if we can call this a live action movie. I'm sure it's gonna be live action looking, but I think this is tremendous news. I'm very excited about it. I hope Favreau doesn't paint himself into a corner with these types of films at this point, but this is the best news. If you're gonna do a live action, live action Lion King movie. This is the guy to do with. I'm super stoked. Jeremy, what do you think about this? Yeah, I'm stoked too, because I love all things Lion King. I, I love uh, the Lion King animation. I love the Broadway production. I love uh, I love the concept of this. I made a joke about whether or not we should call it a live action Lion King or a remake of Hamlet with Lions. What do we do? <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, 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 and I got a couple of people going, oh no, don't do it, don't do it, oh, this is gonna suck. I would say that if the Jungle Book sucked, but the Jungle Book was awesome, so I want to see what else they do. As for whether or not it's animation, the way I see it, it all comes down to perception, right? If yeah. you can make the CGI look real and your brain thinks it's real, then it's a live action movie. I mean, at that point, um, how much of the Avengers is animated, you know? So, it's, I mean, there's there's much more animation and live action mixing than there was in Who Framed Roger Rabbit with half of the uh, yep. Marvel right. movies. So, I'm down for this live action movie. I want to see what they do. I couldn't be more excited. Mark. Somebody get those green screens into some acting classes, John, because they have a heavy duty. Get the tennis balls, a Stanislavski book, because they're going to have to act like they've never acted before. My rules for the Jungle Book being successful are one-fold. No humans. Do not try to throw humans into the Lion King. King. Yeah. It doesn't work. There's one human in Jungle Book, and I'll give you that. The other thing I really want to have happen is a shared universe between the Lion King and the Jungle Book, and I want to see those animals fight each other, King Kong Godzilla style. This is good news. <laughs> 
I'm a little trepidatious because everything's got to be Sheer Khan versus Mustafa? I, is that what you want? I would love that. Boy, I think we know who's going to win that fight. But I think that I want to see this happen the right way. I'm very nervous that it's not going to be done the right way. But the Jungle Book was such a game changer for me yeah. that it's something that I think it's worth taking a shot at. And I echo Jeremy's sentiments where if you think it's real, it feels real. It's like that movie Her where... Yeah, Joaquin Phoenix is falling in love. The person that he's falling in love with isn't real. So the animals I fall in love with watching the Jungle Book weren't real, but they felt real while I was in the theater. That's what matters the most, and obviously no people. Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. Schnapp, what yeah. do you think about this? I love it. You know, the thing that sold me on uh, the Jungle Book when I was watching it was when the wolves started talking to each other, yeah. and the little baby wolves were like, where's Mowgli? And I really believed that these wolves were talking. <laughs> and I felt like I felt like, the, like a blink. Something was breaking inside my brain. I know this is isn't real, but I want wolves to talk now. I want to be able to talk to all animals. I felt like, why can't we all be Dr. Doolittle? So, I mean, if he's going to rock that kind of that crazy animal technology and do a Lion King, I am going to be standing out in line to see this movie. I hope to see it a million times because I actually loved Jungle Book and I love that technology. I don't think he's going to be doing a Broadway play adaptation, which, you know, Favreau would probably rock it if it was humans with weird like, hey, I'm an animal, you know, it's like, I would still, I would see that, but him doing this with what with what he was able to do with Jungle Book, you're right. It makes too much sense. It's like this isn't supposed to happen. This is exactly what we'd want him to do next. Yeah, you know? we never get exactly yeah, what we want. Perfect. Right. Yeah. And think about how emotional The Lion King was anyway. I mean, when oh I was a God. kid, I, oh. I saw that movie for the first time and I was with my family. I didn't want to cry in front of my family. And I was like, Jerry Seinfeld, what is this salty discharge <laughs> that's coming out of my eyes? <laughs> if you can do that with animals that look live action, you put some Can You Feel the Love Tonight oh. back in there, I'm going to be a crying. Too. Yeah. yeah. I, I break at the Mufasa scene every time. Yeah. Oh. Every time. All right. What's next? Marvel has released a new Doctor Strange trailer, and not only are the special effects at the centerpiece of the new spot, but so is the humor. The completed film will feature more than an hour of specially formatted IMAX sequences teased in the new spot that will provide audiences with a totally immersive and mind-bending experience. Along with the trailer, a new set of character posters also <coughs> debuted, readying audiences for the November 4th debut of the Sorcerer Supreme. Schnepp, what do you think about the new TV spot and posters for Doctor Strange? I love the posters and I love this new TV spot. Marvel's just doing what they've done with all their other films where every trailer shows a little bit more of scenes that you saw in the previous trailer. So they're doing a great job at A, not spoiling the movie for you, B, showing you just a little bit more. Now we see a little bit more of Stephen Strange before he was in that car accident. You see him like kind of almost Bruce Wayne-y, like he's got, he's obviously very rich and then he makes that transformation into Doctor Strange. I love the humor, um, Mr. Doctor, and that right there, that great. That's a, that's, <laughs> that to me is why they hired Dan Harmon. You're seeing, those are clips that probably Dan Harmon wrote to add a little bit more of that humor and that, you know, that levity that maybe wasn't there. So I feel like I can't wait to see the movie now, and, and they've shown me just enough. The movie's coming out, what, in a month now? I don't want to see any more, but I'm sure I'll, if they show another trailer, I'll see that too. But. I'm really excited about what I've seen so far. Jeremy. Yeah, the trailer was about a minute long, which I, I think that's perfect for if you're going a month out, don't give us a four minute right. trailer. I mean, one minute is fine. As I was watching, I was like, all right, nothing new, nothing new, nothing new, nothing new. And then the humor at the end hit where, it, well, yeah, he was like, Mr. Doctor, Mr. Doctor, it's strange. Perhaps, who am I to judge? You know, <laughs> like I just, for, I lost it right there. And I was like, I want to see this movie right now. Because mm -hmm. it showed Doctor Strange banter back and forth with Mads Mikkelsen. Right? It's like, Which totally has awesome. his Hannibal Lecter face. <laughs> this dude, I love Mads Mikkelsen in everything because he's he's ominous and he's scary, but now I, I think this is the first time I've ever seen him throw humor. Mm. And so it, it just, it changed my perspective and I, I, I feel like it could be this the feeling I got the first time I saw Iron Man and Tony Stark and that whole transition. I want to see it. Mark? Yeah, this trailer did a great job of what it's supposed to do, which is sell an audience that may not be aware there's a Doctor Strange film or a Marvel film that's new in the cinematic universe coming out very soon. It's built as a TV <laughs> trailer and that's what you're supposed to do is when you see it on TV, you're like, oh, I want to know more about this. What this trailer did well is it was a nice, concise summary of everything that we've known and seen all the material that we got to see at Comic-Con, all the trailers we've seen online and in theaters so far, it took all that and put it into a beautifully packaged one minute event that got me so excited to see Doctor Strange and that IMAX footage of all the buildings changing, Inception style, mm. it's gonna be worth buying to see this movie. Well, Schnuppy, you're saying, you know, you don't wanna see anymore, where you're gonna see more because one of the other things about this is that Disney's announced that they are on October 10th at 7 p.m. at over 115 IMAX locations, they're gonna be 
be showing a special preview of select footage from Doctor Strange. I'll be I'm, going to that. Yeah, we're going to be we're, <laughs> we're going to be at that. So you know, Disney did something similar to this with Guardians of the Galaxy. Now remember, Guardians of the Galaxy was a big question mark. Well, how's this going to do? Then what they do? They rolled out across the country. They showed a 12-minute scene from the movie. Bunch of people went, and after that, everybody was talking about Guardians of the mm -hmm. Galaxy. They're doing the same thing here now with Doctor Strange, which is good because Doctor Strange is the most different kind of character they've tried to put on the big screen so far. It's the biggest question mark on whether or not this character, like Guardians of the Galaxy, will appeal to the average movie going on it. So what are they gonna do? Hey guys, come on out on October 10th and see see what we've got in store for you. I think this is a great move for them, and this trailer I thought was absolutely hilarious. All right, folks, well, it is Wednesday, which means it's time for us to do a little bit of Rewind, brought to you by our friends at AMC Theaters. This is a segment of the show where we celebrate those films turning 10 years old this week and turning 20 years old this week. I call it the Feeling Old segment. Uh, the Feeling Old segment. Celebrating their 10th anniversaries this week, we've got... The Queen, Open Season, oh, that was awful, mm. and School for Scoundrels, and celebrating their 20th anniversaries this week, The Mighty <laughs> Ducks turns 20 years old this week, The Glimmer Man, and Bound. Mark Ellis, you see these films celebrating anniversaries. Which ones stand out to well, you? Well, I will point out it was the third Mighty Ducks. They're not quite as old as you might feel. Oh, D3. That's so right. It's it D3, D3, the, the third Mighty, Mighty Ducks. Mighty Duck, which I was never a huge Mighty Ducks kid growing up. What did I love? early 90s action movies and I remember uh, going to see The Glimmer Man and being like I just want to get that feel because if you forget Keenan Ivory Wayans had a nice little run there with the low down dirty shame with The Glimmer Man he made some cool action movies in the mid 90s you pair him with Steven Seagal that's the movie that stands out uh, out of all of these it's not a very competitive category this week yes. but I will say The Glimmer Man it's a fun 90s action movie I'm actually surprised the one I can't believe is turned 10 years old is The Queen mm. it just feels like a couple years ago mm -hmm. that Helen Mirren was winning seems like she plays actress. a queen every year, doesn't it? Does, it? it does kind of yes. feel that way, doesn't it? That's when it sounds to me. And the movie was wonderful and fantastic. <clears> and it really, it introduced a new generation uh, of film fans to Helen Mirren and how good she is. And to this day, she keeps rocking them out. And she's still that good. And she is the sexiest older actress in Hollywood today. I mean, right? Right? Yeah. Absolutely. I'm holding my hand up in triumph for you. Absolutely. <laughs> I was thinking about that today, funny enough. I was like, there is not a woman her age that is more attractive than Helen Mirren. That's Absolutely. good news for you because I'm sure Helen Mirren watched a lot of 80s sitcoms and probably was a big fan of Perfect Strangers. <laughs> Ms. Mirren? <laughs> Helen. How are you? Which, I, uh, which ones like of these say, films, Jeremy? Don't listen to these guys. <laughs> it's you and me now. And I would just like to say that I love you. <laughs> well, with that out of the way, which of these films stand out to you? Helen Mirren's. <laughs> um, okay, for me, uh, it's funny because I'm gonna I'm gonna go back a little farther. Uh, the Glimmer Man is on theaters. Yeah, absolutely, man. yeah. Um, and uh, I, I, it was that's the one where Steven Seagal takes the credit card and says he's country. <laughs> I'm mm -hmm. rock and roll, right? And slices a dude's <laughs> neck with it. And, and uh, you know, Keenan Ivory Waynes puts powdered deer penis under his tongue. It happens in the movie. I'm just saying. <laughs> Schnapp, for me, it's Bound. That's the first Wachowski it Brothers does. siblings oh, great. film. Yep. Uh, it's Gina Gershon and Jennifer Tilly. I absolutely love that film. It's uh, these uh, it's gals. Was it uh, Pen uh, Pen Who Joey was it? Pants is in it. Yeah, that's uh, right. Joey Pants. A, he was the like, money the guy. laundering. There's a lot of film noir activity going on. There's some amazing girl on girl activity going on. It's it's an incredible film. If you've <laughs> oh. never seen Bound, I don't know what's wrong with you. Get on that. See that movie. It's the Wachowski's incredible debut. It's a fantastic movie. Very a lot of high tension in the movie too. So like, much. Yeah, yeah, they do it's a really good really, job. It's really a really fun film. All right, folks, we've reached the part of the show now for buy or sell. Here's how this works. In front of her ass, she's got a few other items in the world of movie news. She's going to run them down. Then those of us at the table are simply going to say whether we buy it or sell it. So, Ashley, what do we got? Production on the upcoming Avengers Infinity War doesn't officially begin until November, but we're slowly learning a bit about what to expect from the two-part epic. During a press day for Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, Coming Soon asked Nick Fury himself, Samuel L. Jackson, about whether or not S.H.I.E.L.D. will return to the MCU. He said, Yeah, for sure, definitely. Why wouldn't there be? There's some way of fixing what they created, and hopefully somebody has that going on, or Nick Fury is out there, wherever he is, probably hanging out with Jules and walking the world figuring out what happened and how it got to that particular place. Maybe they'll find out that all that was part of a ruse to get to something else also. 
that would be great. They'll bring me back somehow, some way, for some reason. I mean, they didn't have me around to referee the kids when they didn't go to their <laughs> rooms and got in this big old fight. We'll see what happens. Mark, buy or sell Jackson's comments as proof Shield will return to the MCU. Oh, it's a big buy for me. Samuel Jackson, whether he knows exactly what the storyline is going to be that, get Nick's Fury, that gets Nick Fury back into here is one thing, but he seems to have a pretty good handle on the fact that they want him. They were probably in communication with him during Civil War, and like they, like, like he said in these comments, like, hey, we don't need you to come for this little scrimmage that's happening right now, but when the playoffs start, when the big games start happening, we're definitely going to want to see more Nick Fury, so I think you're going to see him back in the MCU. Shep, are you going to see the uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. back? I think you're going to have to see, uh, see Samuel Jackson come back to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the television show, and kind of fix that a little bit. Right now, they have the <laughs> Ghost Rider and Inhumans. I watched the, you know, the fourth season premiere. I was like, what is going on? It's interesting, but it isn't S.H.I.E.L.D. All the cool things that are happening in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Are, has nothing to do with S.H.I.E.L.D. So you're going to have to rebuild that infrastructure. I don't know how they're going to do it, but it would be great to see Samuel L. Jackson come back as Nick Fury to help. But do they really need to rebuild it? Because, I mean, in the movie universe, I mean, they just the next one up, they just reference S.H.I.E.L.D. and Director, uh, right. Director Fury, and no one's going to ask any questions probably. Look, I think it just makes sense you bring him back. Nick Fury is kind of the guy that started the entire MC when you really think about it. It's him showing up in Tony's room at that first post credit scene mm -hmm. in Iron Man saying I'm putting something together called the Avengers Initiative. He's been kind of the spinal cord throughout the entire thing. It just makes sense that you bring him back at this point and that you bring S.H.I.E.L.D. back with him. So yeah, I completely buy this. Jeremy, what about you? Uh, I love his uh, comments about uh, when he left and the kids got into a big old fight. I want to see Samuel L. Jackson back. I don't want to see the organization of S.H.I.E.L.D. back because S.H.I.E.L.D. fell hard. It's kind of like if, if, we, if we found out Homeland Security was invade, invaded by the Third Reich and then that <laughs> fell with social media and everything that gets around these days if they were like hey we want to bring homeland security back everyone would be like you're never bringing that <laughs> right. back so if they tried to bring back shield it would have to be called something else which wouldn't make sense so bring nick fury back bring sam jackson back leave shield dead what do you think mark i like shield as like a shadowy organization now that doesn't really it doesn't have a twitter account anymore you know but <laughs> they're, they're behind the scenes and they take care of these intergalactic battles that happen nick fury might be a prime candidate if he does come back to be somebody who does not make it out of these two movies alive mm, right? and he's up there with you hawkeye but it's one of those guys where it's like we don't know if we need him to continue the storyline after these two films maybe his sacrifice helps win the day in these next two films could it be maybe that this is kind of going to what jeremy was saying schnapp could this be maybe a good pretense to say there is no more shield now there is sword or, or something along those lines it could i mean in this in the latest fourth season premiere of agents of shield they have a new character who's like kind of an android and she's like i've been built to shield you and it's like oh they had to squeeze that in <laughs> but it was it actually kind of worked though because you're like oh they're gonna they're gonna soft shoot out of the shield organization and re kind of configure what shield actually means mm -hmm. all right what's next According to an exclusive from Variety, Mindy Kaling and Emma Thompson are set to star in an untitled movie, Kaling wrote, revolving around a veteran late night talk show host with the social network Scott Rudin producing. The story will follow a venerated late night talk show host played by Thompson, who's in danger of losing her long running show when she hires her first female writer played by Kaling. No release it has been set. Jeremy Byersell, a late night talk show movie with Emma Thompson and Mindy Kaling. Well, as you guys know, if you've been watching this for the last three days, when you bring someone new on you know it can all fall apart pretty fast <laughs> <laughs> um yeah no i mean i think that sounds great i think it i mean it, it sounds like a great premise i think it could be funny i there's something about talk shows when i was in high school especially i would sneak up every night when my parents went to bed and i at 12 30 or 11 30 i would turn on jay leno without them knowing and i would just watch jay leno david letterman i love late night talk show i want to see that comedic behind the scenes like you know that tension i mm -hmm. Yeah, for reasons unknown, just because the first time I ever heard about it was from Ashley's dissertation right over there, but... <laughs> I do want to see it because I like them. I like the premise. So sure, I'm buying it. Why not? I'm an optimist. Yeah, big buy for me. Emma Thompson put her in anything for me. Mindy yeah. Kaling, as a as a writer and a performer, like she's actually quite underrated. I actually really like Mindy mm -hmm. Kaling a lot. So I think this is going to be great. Putting it in the world, the late night talk show, I think is great for me. It's a big buy. Yeah, I mean, it's a shame that the first network late night talk show host that's a female has to be fictional, but it <laughs> does seem like a great premise and perfect material for Emma Thompson. I mean, if it's described as a cross between the Devil Wears Prada and Broadcast News, that's great. Oh, I yeah. also get a little bit of Larry Sanders Show vibe from right. reading this premise as well. Mindy Kaling is always a credit to anything she does. I'm super excited about this now. Actually, Joan Rivers. 
was a female. Oh, that's yeah, a great that's call. Right. That's yeah. a great call. The first in the modern era. Yeah, in today. the modern era. They, they should have one now. You're yeah. right, though. Um, yeah, this sounds really fun. It is very much Gary Shandling, kind of Larry Sanders flavor, which the the, the premise of this sounds like it could be a lot of fun, mm -hmm. so I'm going to buy it. All right, what's next? Have you guys watched The Mindy Project before? Yes. Yeah. Hilarious. She writes for that, doesn't she? Yeah. And so yeah, she wrote this. She wrote like, for The Office, too, right? Mm -hmm. She did. She wrote freaking a freaking hilarious. I'm excited for this. All right, 20th Century Fox has announced they have signed a new multi-picture agreement with IMAX to release Maze Runner, The Death Cure, The Predator, Alita Battle Angel, and an untitled Marvel film in IMAX format. The release notes that they will not shoot any in shoot on any native IMAX photography and will only be digitally remastered. IMAX and Fox most recently partnered for the release of Deadpool for a similar deal to great success. John Byer sell IMAX releases for Maze Runner, The Predator, Alita, and an Untitled Marvel movie. Yeah, buy from me, absolutely. Look, I'm, I'm not a fan of like theatrical gimmicks. Like I don't like 3D. You can just burn that in hell for all I care. But <laughs> IMAX is a different thing. Like IMAX is just gorgeous and beautiful the way they do it. These sound like the types of movies you, should, you can apply this type of technology too for me it's a big buy mark uh huge buy for me anything that's it, it this means if we see predator and imax you know what that means is that there's the, the predator movie is going to happen and so <laughs> yes. i'm instantly excited <laughs> about i mean i would watch this thing on my phone if i could but the fact that it's going to be an imax that's the big sell here i care less about seeing like maze runner and imax but anytime i am in an imax theater it does heighten the experience for me so source material that i might kind of care about suddenly becomes a little more important because i'm in that theater setting so it's a buy jeremy yeah the only bummer about imax is when it snaps from imax back to yes. 35 millimeter yeah. you're like oh that's much darker you feel like you just went from blu-ray to standard def but yeah. when it's in imax it is a different thing the resolution is better the brights are brighter the darks are dark are, are darker the details sharper um i'd watch every movie in imax honestly but i'm with you i hate 3d gimmicks i don't like movie gimmicks just leave it all out i mean d-box i don't get the point but um, IMAX, absolutely. Give it to me every time. Damn, Shit. that's D-Box, son. That's, <laughs> man, you're like, oh, you know, when, the, when you're panning or, you know, the, yeah, the, the oh, chair's like, why, so why am I moving when the can't? It's so weird. It's very strange. But I suggest all of you experience D-Box before they rip them all out because no one's really yeah. paying the extra five bucks to shake around, strangely. But I'm 100% into IMAX. I think what fully sold me was a Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, nice. that Dubai sequence. Oh my I god, that literally was amazing. stomach dropping, just incredible. Mm -hmm. I was like, I want to see every movie in IMAX after I saw that film. So I can't wait to see uh, uh, Alita and The Predator. I just hope they leave that shot on Predator's like wristband for a long time so I can go like <laughs> this when I'm in the theater. And everything that's, happening. that's right. All right, what's next? Paramount Pictures has released a new Fences trailer for the directorial effort from Denzel Washington. The drama is a feature film adaptation of the Tony Award winning stage play by August Wilson, which takes place in the 1950s and revolves around an African American former baseball star who now works as a trash collector. The film stars Washington and Viola Davis and opens in theaters on December 25th. Mark Byers saw the new trailer for Fences. Uh, Denzel, Viola, thank you guys so much for showing up to my Oscar store. Uh, we don't have them in stock yet. We didn't think <laughs> we need them this early. I have them ordered. They will be delivered soon. You guys are both winning them this year. Right. It, this trailer was magnificent. I remember reading the play Fences when I was in college and being blown away by the material and having somebody like Denzel and somebody like Viola Davis who have already crushed it on Broadway. They know this thing inside and out, putting it on the big screen. It's fantastic. They picked a great scene to showcase what these acting chops are for the first time we get to see any footage mm. from Fences. And it also, I was really happy to see Stephen Henderson is in this movie too he's great in everything he does he was in lincoln it's fantastic all the time i loved watching this trailer it might be the biggest buy of anything today yeah it's a big buy for me this is great this is actually denzel washington's third film that he's directed he did antoine fisher he did the great debaters which if you haven't seen the great debaters you check it out but you can see it's gotten better and better and this just looks like it's gonna be the cherry um, that whole speech between him and his son mm. i mean i would give him the oscar just for mm. that alone i love this trailer cannot wait to see this movie for me it's a buy schnepp it's gotta suck for other actors when they this trailer <laughs> drops and they're just like, damn, it's gone. <laughs> the, ch the chance that I had is gone. I mean, it's the like, cover badge is like, push Doctor Strange to next year. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's pissed right now because yeah, this I buy this trailer and I got emotional watching it. I was watching with all of us and was like, it's so powerful. Yeah. And just the just Denzel Washington talking to his son and Viola Davis the interacting with him. Oh my god, it's incredibly powerful. And you just watch like a two minute trailer and you're kind of your soul is crushed in a weird horrible mm -hmm. emotional way and it, it I, 
I don't know what else to say that, you know, I cannot wait to see this movie. And I think, yeah, all of you are right. There's Oscar written all over it. You know? Jeremy, you generally hate Oscar worthy movies. Why do you not like this trailer? <laughs> because Denzel Washington, I'm not a big fan of. I saw Training Day and I was like, I would like it, but Denzel was just not good in it. Ethan <laughs> Hawk brought it. So, you know, I just don't get the point. I just don't really get the. No, seriously, jumping off of what you guys said, it was like I, I had not gotten so emotional and tense like mm. you know you make the fists when when he's monologuing to his kid i'm like oh it's just a trailer i've been here for two minutes you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it was powerful it was emotional it was impactful and and i mean i think the reason other people win oscars is because denzel every few years steps back and goes okay you guys can have it and then when he wants to he's like all right time to play and yeah. he just comes right in i mean who you know when denzel's going to win an oscar you know you just do you see it you're like all right it's gonna happen um i want to watch it but it's going to be so insanely adrenaline filled for me. You know what I mean? Right. But I, I'm gonna walk out of there. Not, I'm not gonna speak to a friend for a week. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be like, no, I just gotta, I just gotta, I, I gotta go in my cave. I you watched I mean? this trailer and I now want to have a kid just so I can give him that speech, <laughs> just so I can put him in his. I've never wanted to have kids before. I probably won't again. But I want to have a child just so I can be like, I'm your dad and I don't have to like you. I love that. <laughs> Mark Ellis, Father of the Year. Damn That's right. right. I'm the one that get. You kids don't get the trophy. I get the trophy. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, listen. Movie talk is not the only show. Drop today on Collider videos here on YouTube. A little bit later today on our own channel, you can find Heroes with our own John Schnepp. That Sorry. show's gonna be dropping at 2 p.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. That's 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Make sure you check that out. And also tomorrow, don't forget, Movie Talk also airs tomorrow, so keep your eyes open for that. Also, guys, we do this show live every day, Monday through Friday. So for those of you watching live, we save a little bit of time at the end of the show to take your live Twitter questions. You can start sending in your Twitter questions right now. Make sure you're following us at Collider Video and send your Twitter questions to us there. Wendy's keeping an eye on our Twitter right now to pick out some questions. But for now, it's time for Mailbag. Listen, if you've got a topic or a question you'd like us to address in the show, just email us anytime at Collidervideo at gmail.com. Every day we take a couple of your questions. We got two lined up right now. So Ashley, what do we got? Nicola S. writes, do you guys think that having Luke too much in the trailers would be a mistake? They made such a big deal of the need to find Luke in SW7, and we didn't get to see him until the end, just a few seconds and zero lines. In my opinion, it would ruin it a bit if the first time we ever hear Luke speak in the new movies is in a promo for SW8. I get that they would want to show him in the promos to help sell the movie, and considering the story of SW8, it will probably center around Luke. It would be hard to make trailers for for it without showing him, but I'm hoping they can do it without him speaking, or if he does, keep it to a couple of words at the most. What do you guys think? I can, I see where you're coming from, I do, but I think it would be a brutal mistake to not have feature Luke prominently in the trailers and speaking. Remember, we went, ha like, what, 20 years between having Han Solo movies, we got to hear Han Solo speak in the trailer, Chewie, we're home. You know, that you do that and that works great. You've got to sell Luke Skywalker in the trailers for episode eight. You have to. You don't hold it off to let people wait uh, until we do that. You absolutely have to have Luke talking. I want to see a l ignited lightsaber in his hand. I'm gonna stop talking now because I'm gonna get really worked up about what I want to see Luke doing. But I'm like, like again, I totally see where you're coming from, and I see your logic train of thought there. I just disagree with it. I think you do got to have a lot of Luke in there. Schnapp, what do you think? Yeah, I, I love when you start talking about like a whole bunch of people are all, all stormtroopers are freaking out, and then we pan over and you see Luke Skywalker, and he turns on the green lightsaber. <laughs> Star like Wars no, episode eight. There's no footage yet. Yeah. It's like, but you know what? We know we're gonna see. I mean, it'd be silly if Disney didn't have a Star Wars eight trailer for Rogue One. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, or maybe not, yeah. maybe, I don't know. Would that be too much? Like, it would be like, no, nah, I don't want to watch Rogue One. I want to see that trailer again. <laughs> I don't know if, how that really is going to work out or maybe they'll drop it a week before Rogue One. Who knows, but we're all very excited to see Star Wars Episode Eight, and we're all very excited to see Luke Skywalker talk. You know, yeah. I felt a little bummed out that it just, then then it was you're like, wait a minute, they're on a, they're an edge of a mountain and she's handing him a lightsaber and it ends? You gotta wait three years, you know? So I can't wait to see him talk. I don't think it's going to be like a paragraph of him talking. It'll maybe one or two really cool lines. And uh, I think you'll feel good about it. I know what you're talking about because you've built up this anticipation because he didn't talk in Star Wars 7. So you feel like you want to have that moment saved for Star Wars Episode 8. But don't worry about it. They're, they're going to give you a line that is great that he says. I'm sure that they figured it out. Jeremy, do you think they'll have Luke 
like really pr- feature Luke in the trailers and talking a lot? Or do you think they might take that approach? Or do you think they should take the approach of, you know what, let's save him till the actual movie? Um, I don't know about saving him for the actual movie. I would like to hear a Luke Skywalker, a Skywalker monologue for sure. But I also, they featured Han Solo a lot in the, old tra- in the trailer for episode seven because no one knew the new crew. Now mm, people right. know the new crew. They're fans of Finn. They're fans of Poe. Mm. They're fans of Rey. So I would like to see them featured more because it is their story. I'd, I'd just like the trailer to properly really represent what the movie is. If Luke is in it prominently, then have Luke in the trailer prominently. Mm, if he's not in point. it prominently, if you feature him prominently in the trailer and he's not in the movie, people are going to be disappointed again. So you just kind of got to ride the line of selling what you got, but also being honest. But uh, I, I'd like to hear a Luke Skywalker monologue while showing the new crew. Mm. Mark? I just love that all the nerdery at the ladies' table for Harry Potter has now come back over to this <laughs> side <laughs> for Star Wars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because, let's not forget, we actually did hear Luke Skywalker get to say something with the Force of Awakens promo material because right. he did the mon. It was from Return of the Jedi, but Mark Hamill recorded a new voiceover when he says that you know I have that power, you have that power, you know you have that power too, whatever it was. That was us hearing Luke Skywalker. I think you're going to hear Luke Skywalker. I don't know that you're actually going to see him say a whole lot. I think the first trailer you might see him say something right at the end, maybe when a lightsaber ignites. You're going to see him because again, Luke Skywalker, very different character than Han Solo. Han Solo yeah. is a lifelong smuggler. He's a guy who's going to be talking a lot. He's going to different places. He's visible. Luke Skywalker has been in hiding. We didn't know where the hell Luke was at the beginning of the movie. Now, will they call episode eight Luke, 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 Luke? Probably. <laughs> it starts no. episode eight. That's Luke, right. Luke, Luke, and Luke, then, Luke. And then, like, like war, it's just going to be Luke! Exclamation point. Put away the milk cartons. We found the guy, and we're going to have an adventure with him. I don't think you're going to see him talk too much, though. So Perry and I had a good discussion on Collider Mailbag this weekend about how much he's going to be featured in the posters. Mm. I think Luke will be in a poster. I just don't think you're going to hear a lot of lines from him in the trailers. Right. Schnepp, what do you think? Uh, I think he's going to be featured prominently in the poster for sure. I want hopefully they drag Drew Struzan back out of retirement to do oh, another yeah. poster. And um, uh, yeah, I agree with you what you guys are saying. Monologue probably like him talking over images, images especially the very first teaser trailer. Some sort of badass like like, like this is what a Jedi does kind of line, right. and then we go about our day. Like this is why I had to go away, and this is why I'm back, mm-hmm. or something yeah. like that. All right, folks. Hey, I've skipped over a show. Another show that is airing here. We got so much going on at Collider Video. Another show that's airing a little bit later today is, of course, the Top 10 show. That airs at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard mm-hmm. Time. Keep your eyes open for that. All right, let's go to the next mailbag question. Sam Dean writes, Hello, Collider crew. You guys are my daily addiction. My friend and I were looking ahead to the summer of 2017 and deciding if we could only see five films, which ones could we not miss? So if you had to pick only five films coming out from the beginning of May to the end of August, in 2017 what would your list be okay so for me personally uh in no particular order all right i've got dunkirk i think you know the new chris nolan film Mm -hmm. dunkirk that that thing looked great to me uh war of the planet of the apes Mm -hmm. because i really did like the other apes films Uh, i've got uh spider-man homecoming super excited about that kingsman the golden circle and my number one is going to be uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And you know what? I'm probably going to bump off. No, you can't. You already said it. Yeah. I already said it. No take backs. No take backs. No take backs. Uh, uh, I got to make room for Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman falls in that right window too, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to have room for Wonder Woman in there because I'm, I'm damn excited about that. I don't know. Schnapp, what about you? Well, I was going to say Gerard Butler from Geostorm, but that <laughs> comes out October 20th, 2017. Um, so my, my list is... Uh, I'll go from number one to five. I got Guardians of the Galaxy, most anticipated, Wonder Woman right after that, Alien Covenant right after that, Spider-Man Homecoming right after that. And then it's kind of a mix between Valerian and the City of a Thousand Planets. That does look good. And War of the Planet of the Apes. Because I didn't see, I haven't seen a trailer. They dropped a lot of stuff at San Diego Comic-Con for Valerian, and I missed all of it. But everybody was like, you didn't see it? It was so awesome. I was like, no, I didn't see it. It got me angry. I'm still angry. Mark? <laughs> well, I did the honor of putting it in order for everybody out there. At number five, I'm going to have Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Homecoming, the movie I'm very excited about. I got to see a little taste of him in Civil War. At number four, I think I'm going to have to put Dunkirk in there, even though the extra was so bad in that trailer. Hopefully they get him out of the movie by the time <laughs> the film comes out. At number three, I'm going to have Wonder Woman. At number two, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And at number one, if you thought I went crazy for apes on horses, wait till they fly helicopters and play... 
I don't know what's going to be happening in War for the Planet of the Apes, but I know it's going to be a war on a planet where there's apes, and I cannot wait to see that movie. Huge number one pick for me. <laughs> Jeremy. It's funny how closely my list was emulating yours, John. You, I think you cheated off my paper like in math <laughs> class. Um, <laughs> all right, well, uh, again, I think this is an order of release. Uh, Wonder Woman is on there because it's the last best hope between DC and the people. Uh, Spider-Man Homecoming, longtime Spider-Man fan. War of the Planet of the Apes, to, just to see Mark Ellis' reaction. Dunkirk, absolutely, because Christopher Nolan did something, and I'll watch it. <laughs> and uh, Alien Covenant. I want to see uh, where uh, where they go now with the the Alien franchise and uh, Prometheus. And so, yeah, honorable mine. mention for me is Life, though, with Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal. They like come back from Mars. They see that like, oh, they brought something back that's life, and then it starts to like become too life, and it's like, oh, there's too much life here now. We have to stop it. You said life a lot. There's so life, much life. life. <laughs> War for the planet of the apes because right. apes are using tractors. Life. <laughs> All life. right. Folks, I said we'd save a little bit of time for some of your live questions via Twitter, and we're going to do that right now. You still might have some time to squeeze in one or two. Follow us at Collider Video on Twitter and send on in the questions. Wendy, what have you picked out? Chris Galaz, do you bring back any of the original voices for The Lion King, and how about Elton John? Wow. Ooh. That's a... Uh, Damn. There's a calm surrender. I mean, you'd almost... Uh, I'm forgetting the guy, Benson, who did Rafiki. Uh, why am I forgetting... Uh, Gouli um, Is it, was it Robbie Benson? Well, Robert Guillon, thank you. I, you I, would, I would bring back Robert Guillon. I'm going to look really dumb if he's passed away. I don't think he's passed away. Uh, Robert Guillon, I actually interviewed Robert Guillon a few years ago when they did the re-release of Lion King. It was like one of the thrills of my career. That guy, his voice is just so like awesome and mm -hmm. you sit down and talk to him. I, if I was going to bring back any of the originals, I would probably bring back him to do Rafiki, but... I think you go with the fresh slate, generally speaking. I don't know, Jeremy, what do you think? I think you should bring back Jonathan Taylor Thomas for adult Simba this time. <laughs> yeah. That would just blow some minds. No, um, I, I, uh, I mean, Elton John's already written the music, so the music is done. So whoever performs it, I feel like the actors uh, can and should perform it. Uh, one, I would bring back, I'm with you though, clean slate. Let's see, Idris Elba as Scar, why not? Uh, but uh, I want to see James Earl Jones as Mufasa. Actually, Jeremy Irons did Scar. Jeremy, no, no, he wants no, no, no. to see Idris Elba do Scar. Oh, I think so. If you're no, going to bring yeah. somebody no, no, no. back. Uh, yeah, I want to okay. see Idris yeah. Elba do Scar. You want to see Idris but, Elba but, uh, do Scar, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, but uh, James Earl Jones as Mufasa. Like, he, he's he going to be Darth Vader in Rogue One. Why you not might as well Mufasa? just like springboard onto that, like Mufasa. Yeah, I got to go point. with. Who does I, I'm Wolf's going Scudu with it. Team Darth Vader slash yeah. this is CNN to be the voice of Mufasa once again. I'm sure Chris Galisky and I are going to be texting about this later on today. I also wouldn't hate the idea of Whoopi Goldberg leading a new pack of hyenas into battle. That'd be a lot. <laughs> I, I need to I need to interject and say that I immediately was racked with guilt at the fact that I just bumped Jeremy Irons off my slate, <laughs> so I think he should remain Scar. Jeremy Irons' Scar was so oh, good. Oh, it was the best. What does that make you? A monkey's uncle. <laughs> You're so good at that. Okay, I see this is a good place for uh, you know John Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. to team up again. So get Downey Jr. in there as a voice. I, yeah, an all-new cast is what I would like to see. Have we ever heard Robert Downey Jr. do an animated voice? I can't think of it off the top of my head. He so. might have done a voice on Family Guy, or that might have been family guy saying that they always have these celebrities and sometimes yeah. they don't show up so yeah, I don't know. all right what's next <laughs> rogue one fighter says do you think that the great agent phil colson will return to the big screen maybe even in infinity wars it's a good question i remember uh joss whedon basically said look in our movies he's dead yeah <laughs> <that's> <laughs> I mean, exactly they, right they right. just kind of put it that way now if joss whedon is not directing infinity war I got the feeling he's not, and it's, it's unfortunate because I really like the Agent Coulson character. Um, and so, I mean, I would be up for it if they did, but I have a feeling they're just not, Jeremy. Yeah, I love Clark Gregg, I love Phil Coulson, but I do feel like him dying, um, I mean, it put everyone in focus and they came together as the Avengers. I don't want to trivialize that, so I say we stick with what Joss Whedon said, even though he's not on the payroll anymore, and we do keep him dead. Mark? I totally agree with Jeremy here. I love Clark Gregg, I love his work as an actor. I don't think it's gonna be right for Infinity War. He's like. He's just going to be that rumor like Andy Kaufman or Elvis. Like, we think he's dead, but we're not really <laughs> sure. Right. Well, I mean, Bucky Barnes was dead, and they brought him back as the Winter Soldier. Oh, but, yeah, that worked out well. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, now he, hey, he's sleeping in Wakanda right now with armor. He better stay <laughs> asleep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, what's next? Phil Fan Foom says, what were some of your favorite viral marketing campaigns? Cloverfields was just insane. Yeah, Cloverfields was great, but honestly, like the, the um, sheer amount of creative new things we've never seen done before that they did with Deadpool, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. that marketing campaign yeah. just floored me. 
Like it was almost like I was looking forward to the next piece of marketing they were putting it out as much as I was looking forward to the movie. It was crazy. Whether it's the stuff with him with the kids on Halloween, mm -hmm. the stuff he did with the NBA stuff, the Deadpool uh, posters, like the, the Deadpool just the emoji posters. poster or the like romantic Valentine's Day. Poster. Yeah, I mean, it was just a love story. I mean, just the way they managed and the sheer variety of stuff that they cranked out. Uh, like the Cloverfield one was great. It absolutely mm -hmm. was. But that Deadpool one to me. Can you guys think of anything? Yeah. Um, what was it? Uh, John Carter. That in marketing campaign was oh, fantastic. Yeah. Remember, Brilliant. just like a dude with the weird apes jumping behind him? No, of course you didn't remember. No one saw the movie. The other one that sticks out is Tomorrow Never Dies with that weird music. Which uh, one? What, the Bond movie? No, no, no. Uh, maybe I'm saying it wrong. What, the, Edge, of the top, Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of yeah. Tomorrow. I can't even remember what it was called. because so, I mean, it's, the movie it's itself. It's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 You can just yeah. change the title. <laughs> the, movie, the, t the title of the movie is so <laughs> horrible. The, the movie itself is incredible. Yeah. It's a fantastic film, but like it was, uh, they should have just kept All You Need Is Kill. You know, that would have been But a that whole marketing title. campaign, especially the first two trailers, is one of the most botched yeah, marketing campaigns seriously. ever. What about you guys? Sometimes the marketing campaign is great, but it doesn't pay off. And I think that was the case with Blair Witch, even though the movie ended up making Making money because it only cost five million bucks to make. It was really exciting leading up to it. I saw a lot of people on Twitter and social media going crazy. The other one is that a couple years ago, I remember getting on Twitter. I was a fresh face on Twitter and I saw this thing, John Wick, that everybody was raving about this trailer that oh, just yeah. came out. So John Wick did a great job. Uh, District 9, too, had a really interesting marketing campaign. Lots of different things the they did. Yeah. The bus stop thing where it's yeah. like, a, what district? It was really cool. Oh, also the one that made you cry, Star Wars. When the Chewy were home every, um, oh, every yeah. that, that marketing Maybe. campaign just dropping. But that they didn't trailer. really do anything. They didn't really do any uh, it was viral. Meta. It was they didn't do meta any meta or no, any viral hyped. marketing for it. Everyone it was on the planet hyped. watched it. Yeah. Everyone knew when it was dropping. It's like sometimes you're just like, oh, this this trailer just showed up. All of us knew when that was happening. You know the, the funny thing? The best marketing I had seen for some stupid reason was an Old Spice campaign. <laughs> like the oh, deodorant. That, no, that was... no, it was it was at a point that dude, the Old Spice dude was responding in videos on YouTube to tweets he was getting. And in five minutes, he would have a video response wow. to somebody. Yeah. And it was like a super production. You're like, that, that must have taken a day. No, it took him like five minutes, 30 minutes, max. The that Russo the brothers best. did that too for a civil war. Like you could tweet in if you were like Team Iron Man or oh, Team Captain right. America, yep. and then they would like, like read your tweet. They're like, oh, Mark from Schmoes, no. When are we going to be in the Schmoda? And I was like, ah, is that, is that my, is that my <laughs> Well, they never responded to me, so that's Old Spice. Old Spice. Um, <laughs> another film that did a really interesting marketing, like some viral stuff, was one of the first movies I remember trying to do digital viral marketing was Snakes on a Plane. And yeah. I remember they started putting out free MP3s of Samuel L. Jackson that you could use for your answering machine. He goes, he can't call the phone right now. He's helped me deal with these mother effing snakes on this mother effing wow, plane. And they started putting those sweet. out and it was, it was wonderful. I'm looking at the chat room too. Uh, Paranormal Activity, the first one, had a great one because it's like, if you want to see this movie in your town before anybody else gets to see right. it, tweet us now. So I get, I get, I get, I get a lot of Yeah, stuff. Blair Witch uh, saying that it was the woods and then at Comic-Con revealing, oh, oh yeah, by the way, great you're watching move. Blair Witch. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was huge. That was probably the smartest one I've seen in decades. Wendy, can you think of any films that had like like really good like viral or different types of marketing that really hit? One that really caught my attention was Chronicle, the Josh Trank yes. movie. They had people in like flight suits and flying over like New York. It was insane. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. I totally forgot about that. Nice. And, like that was that was a really good one what too. What was the marketing that I, I, not everyone got to see this, but they had sent a package here and it was pictures of you, John. And oh my gosh. Oh, oh, it was the, the, the forest. The oh, gift. It was oh. the, the gift. gift. Oh, it's so creepy. So creepy. That I love freaked that me. Cause I, I think you're the one who brought me the yeah. package. Like so this, the delivery guy brings this package. It's like, oh, from your hey, remember those times that we did this and it's like <laughs> who right. sent this to oh, me man. and it was marketing for nice. the gift and the, by the way if you haven't seen the gift see the gift incredibly it's creepy incredibly awesome good film. movie all right last question of the day all right this one comes from allegiant us he says i'm confused by how thursday night openings work are they added with the opening day total or after the box office run you know what that's a really good question i i to my understanding the Friday night or Thursday night, which started as midnight and then they got moved to 10 and now it's like 7 and 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. So whenever you see a movie, in case you didn't know this, when they see a movie opens Friday, what that really means is Thursday night at 7 or 8 o'clock is when it really opens. To the best of my knowledge, that is included in their opening weekend numbers. I could be wrong about that, but do you guys know any different? When I worked at the movie theater, that's why they were at midnight because they couldn't sell them until Friday. So the midnight numbers counted for the weekend numbers because it was Friday. And that since they moved them back to Thursday at 8, I have no earthly idea. I'm pretty sure they, they yeah. all factor into that opening weekend number because Thursday, I mean, look, Thursday 7 p.m., it's pretty much the weekend. Call right. in sick on Friday. <laughs> but they do, the, if you go to box office, 
Miles Mojo, they do sometimes, you know, add all of those, whatever, if it's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, and midnight, they add all of those up for the midnight, you know, a mass amount was $3 million, and then Friday's full day is like $30 million, yeah. so it's $33 million. But they, they sometimes make, you know, whatever the previous, uh, you know, showings where they add those all up. Now, our very own Cody Hall back there behind the panel there, he's uh, texting to me right now that they the Thursday numbers count as Friday numbers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that would make sense on. that they would do Consider that. Consider yeah. the source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's He's got box office mojo info on one tab. He's got Pornhub on the other tab during the whole show. <laughs> I, 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 Talk about that coming. <laughs> All right, folks, that'll do it for us for this installment of Collider Movie Talk. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, guys, the most important part of this show is not what we have to say. It's what you have to say. Jump into the comments section below and leave your thoughts on any or all of the topics that we discussed here today. I want to thank the guy sitting at the table with me first. First of all, sitting over here, Mr. John Schnepp. Schnepp, where can people find you online? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram, just at John Schnepp. Uh, Heroes drops later today, like John said, at uh, 2 p.m., and uh, next week, I'll be at New York Comic Con, booth 309. And we're doing, on Thursday, a very special live Collider Heroes panel. So let's get sweaty. Come on down to the New York Comic Con. And then I'll be hanging out with a very specific person named Mark Ellis later. <gasps> Just to be clear, when he says a live one, that's not going to be streaming live. Right. He means live and in person. You got to be there. Yes, you got to be there. Sitting over here, the aforementioned Mr. Mark Ellis. Mark, where can we find you? You can't stream everything, kids. Sometimes you just got to show up live, like to New York Comic Con, where I'll be doing stand up at New York Comedy Club that Thursday, October 6th, 8 30 and 10 30 shows. You can get tickets on my website, markellislive.com. And of course, this Friday, the Ultimate Schmodown Tournament continues. I'm still alive. Baby Carrots is taking on the wild man, Josh McCuga. Can he pull another up? Upset? No, he can't. I'm going to beat him. <laughs> and sitting over there in the end, Mr. Jeremy Johns. Jeremy, how are you going to revive your 80s acting career? Uh, you will, I'm going to revive it at Jeremy Johns on Twitter, at Jeremy Johns on YouTube. I will not be at U New York Comic Con. I'm going to be with my man Cody in a por Pornhub vortex. <laughs> you can join us there later on. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and of course... Ashley and Wendy. Ashley, where can people find you? How, how are we going to follow that up? I don't right. know. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Ashley Mova. Happy Wednesday, you guys. And Wendy. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you can simply find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at John Campia. Make sure you subscribe to Comic-Con HQ, where John and I do our show, Film HQ, every Saturday morning. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. My name is John Campia, and until next time, bye-bye. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.